also have three other initiatives that we launched that are a little bit more contained, right? They define innovation a little bit differently for us because innovation also is about tailored, passion-based learning experiences for kids. If you want to dive deep, how can we create opportunities for you to do that? And that's what the Academy of Global Studies is a really excellent example of. For those kids that want to study a global issue in depth and have a pretty high-end academic experience, right? The, the Academy is set up that way. We have two um, cohorts of kids that are engaged in this program now. Uh, the sophomores, the 21 sophomores who were first members took the seminar last year as freshmen. The seminar is effectively your global uh, issue boot camp. You get exposure to a broad range of global issues and you begin to hone in on the one that you want to study in some depth. And then this year, uh, they are now working with the Capstone Committee and they're honing that issue that they want to study even further. The first thing they do is create a thesis statement and the second thing they're going to do is create an annotated bibliography to, to end off this sophomore year. Now, this capstone committee is fascinating, and all credit goes to this upper school faculty. I've got people up there, like 14 faculty members upstairs, already teaching a full load, who when Dr. Hotz, the director of the AGS, said, you know, will you help us out by being on a capstone committee? I'm like, sure, I'll give you some more time. <laughs> so the individual kids have three faculty members, two or three faculty members, who they're sitting down with, akin to a master's thesis committee, right, who are helping them frame this issue and think about this issue deeply and engaging them in through this repartee and, and relational discussion on this topic, right? Incredible, you know, incredible commitment by the faculty to, to do that. And what has happened is the kids here in the sophomore class have selected their, uh, their issues. I just took two girls and two boys, you know, just to gender balance the thing. But you can see the nature of what they're going. So you talk about choice, right, and, and what you're consuming and what you're studying, right? You've got it there in terms of the nature of what they're looking at. Junior year, their job is to link this to something in one of their courses, right? So, for example, if Anna's studying pollution in China, she might, through her science class, begin, uh, have, the, have the liberty to look at an element uh, in, in a chemistry class that connects to the study of pollution in China. She'll get a little flex from her faculty member to connect it back to her thesis topic, right? And then senior year, they'll take their capstone course, which will get them ready to deliver their capstone senior spring. Their capstone is their demonstration of all they've learned about this issue. Now, a, a true to our philosophy about presentation choice, what they present to us after their research paper is done, right? what they present to their committee is open and creative. Right? You want to do poetry, art, music? Right? You want to do a standard PowerPoint presentation, something with tech background? Right? That will be up to the kids. And what they'll produce will be um, fantastic, I'm sure. In addition to the academic experience, the academy kids uh, have two other obligations. They have an obligation to service, which all upper school kids do 15 hours, but the academy kids are tilting theirs toward an international topic, generally one that's akin to their area of study. Right? So we have given them, again, choice in terms of the intensity of their service experience. Right? Some are doing a more straight line 15 hours. We have some that are going to start their own NGOs or tend to NGOs, those are non-government organizations, effectively nonprofits, that they're, they're going to start their own, or they're going to tend to one that kids of ours have started, like Kids Aid, which you've probably seen in the communication that uh, Pippa and Pooja have started here. That's going to live here at Parish after they're gone. So a student AGS could take that on, providing medical supplies to kids in need in uh, Latin American countries. They could take that on and tend to it and continue to move it, right, if they wish. So they're going to have phenomenal products coming out of there. Nick Burdett, and Talia, one of the kids that was listed up there, they're already, they're already running their NGO out, presented in chapel already. They're on fire on that. But we don't need every AGS kid to do that. Okay? The second component is education. So they need to be engaged as global citizens and communicators through, their, through the education they take in. And we partnered up with the World Affairs Council. You probably saw we had Ryan Crocker here, uh, General Antel in the, in the fall. Um, and that partnership has yielded speakers. We expect the AGS students to be there. They ask great questions, and they get engaged, and they need to, they need to um, be, be involved at that level. All right? So there are 19 freshmen now taking the seminar. Uh, you know, 15 of them probably will yield in next year's class, I suspect. And I think in time, what you'll see is AGS numbers kind of settle into the 12 to 15 range on, a, on an annual basis. The kids sort of understand what it entails now. So we had a lot of applicants the first year, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this. You know, and that's okay because we have the Leadership Institute, which will probably be another 15 to 20 kids. So if you're talking 25 to 30 kids per 100 student class engaged in these two programs, that's probably about right 